Hi, Caroline Crane here at Palian Arts, uh, and I'm standing with the terrific Terrence Thompson in front of two of his three pieces that will be on our Portray It show, which will run from January 19th through March 12th. Terrence, can you introduce us to these two pieces? Okay, so this one is Child of God, and this one is The Stare. Uh, this one is basically talking about um, my friend Sophia. Uh, she's part of the LGBT. Uh, Q, and she's also like Christian, mm. so it's kind of like layering, trying to show the beauty in her, mm -hmm. but also like the gospel in a way. I love that. And that she is a child of God. Yeah. We are all children of God, <clears throat> and you would think the godly would appreciate that, but they don't always. So I love the way <clears throat> that you use birds and the symbolism as avatars for freedom and the freeing of souls. Um, can you talk a little bit about how um, you think about your imagery? Because your imagery is always very strong. Like, uh, you have lots of pattern, you have, and a lot of symbolism and meaning. But can you talk specifically how you think about some of the objects that you put in your pieces? So for like this one, I was kind of giving like, uh, the gates, like the gates of heaven. Oh, uh, I can see that. Like, I love it. You know, anybody can get in. Uh, try to show like a lot of texture, like colors, because that's the way she is. Same as me. So I love that. I, I love that it is both uh, talking about texture and pattern and this idea of acceptance, but also it is a portrait based on her. Oh, well, them, I should say. So, well, I also sorry, I'm like... a little old, so I have to correct myself. Yeah, I also like the idea that you said, oh, this is like the gates of heaven. And I look at it and I go, yeah, that is like the gates of heaven. But it also, it looks like um, they are tucked into this nice safe bed. Yeah. And that kind of almost becomes the headboard of this, of the bed and the safety of being in this room. Yeah, they're, they're nested in, in a place of, um, the way that you have the rainbow surrounding them, and then this um, almost what looks like um, a hilly or mountainous region, and some flowers and things, they look like they're blanketed by the world, uh, which is really uh, a beautiful metaphor of safety for somebody whose life experience might not always teach them to feel safe. Beautiful. So that's beautiful. Yeah. You did it. Well, you said it, so. <laughs> <laughs> do you find, Terrence, do you find it difficult to put into verbal expression something that apparently is so natural to the way that you express yourself visually? Because your, yeah. your visual vocabulary is very complex and you are a very thoughtful person. Uh, we've had the pleasure of getting to know uh, Terrence over the, the last year. You're such a thoughtful person. Your materiality is so intricate. Um, your artist statements are so nuanced, and you're a fairly quiet person, which I find interesting. So yeah, I. I love son. <laughs> so uh, I think that that was a really good point because I do think that that's it's not a point. It was a question. Oh, I'm sorry. I apologize. So do you find it hard oh, yeah. to express the vocabulary? Like, um, I would say so. Where I just have to sit at it for a while and really think about it more and more. And you find that the visual is easier for you to express yeah. than the. That's so. I don't know what that's like because I'm a words person. But, uh. Yeah. Well, <laughs> words are art too, you know, poetry and. That is true. Um, so when you're composing these, um, you're thinking of them in an almost purely visual way, and then, like, because it's a concept that feels so natural within you? Yeah, uh, visual, conceptual, uh, different ideas kind of mend together a little bit. Mm -hmm. When you're doing composition, how do you think about that approach? Like, do you come up with what they're going to be beforehand? Do you pick the materials beforehand? Like, Kind of as I go. So I pick a topic and then the piece kind of like talks to you as you go and then you kind of add stuff to it and Here's an idea, here's an idea. Yeah, that's so, I, I. What language does it talk back to you in? 
Like me, meaning like you, what you're saying is you pick it, you have certain things yeah. and then you start to put it together. And then as you go, it's telling you maybe what's next. Is so that, is it, is it t telling you in words? Is it telling you in um, ideas that you catch from the outside world? Or is it telling you the idea from inside it? The like, artwork. I would say inside it, like the visuals and the ideas and feelings from what I'm seeing so far. I think that that's so fascinating because you really are like, um, you're a person who like, I think that we, because we're a word bait, like our society relies on like words as communication. I think that one of the things that's so interesting about that is that your visual vocabulary is so advanced that you can't always put feelings into words, but you know what you're yeah. feeling. So I love this piece. I, Terrence, I have yet to see a piece of yours that I did not love. Um, uh, we'll forgive you. Can you, can you tell me um, about this one right now? Where did you find the materials? How do you collect the materials? So a lot of it is like gift wrap, um, pictures and things I find are laying around. Um, she's very like floral, so I want a lot of flowers. Um, mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, it, is this wallpaper? No, 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 no. It's, it's paper. It's really pretty paper. Yeah. It's paper. Um, a lot of baking soda, like chemicals, somewhat. So it's like a lot of fabric freshener and chemical. Uh, well, and you also have in here. You can actually see the text that is overlaying. It's poetry, yes. Which is beautiful little nugget that like um did you, you write the poetry or did no, you no i was thinking about it but but it was a poem that you felt would speak to them but yeah. to you yeah yeah i uh i have another i have another question can't help it um the image of your subject did you take that picture or well, did, was it did they drawing? i did actually take the picture it's did you um, so I, embellish I, it? So I took the picture and then I cut it out and I drew on top of it, kind of in my own little bit, so yeah. Yeah, it's really, uh, because it- It's lends, striking. It's striking and it adds a nice dimension um, that makes it, uh, makes them like um, the image, but makes them kind of float within the space yeah. because there's an ethereal nature mm -hmm. that you've then codified with like the lines and things like that. Um, and so they're in their own like little floating nest, which is, which is beautiful. Um, when you, I'm curious at, at what point you put the poem down. Did you start with the poem and then build on it? I or did you do it? So, and then you allowed that to kind of help inform the composition. Yeah. So it was from the poetry I came up with, like the uh, the gates of heaven. I'm very yeah. curious about the poem. So I'm going. You know what I'm going to do is I'm going to read the words that I can, and then we Google it until I find it. Unless that makes you uncomfortable, and then I'm not going to do that. No, oh, she'll right. do it. it she'll was, do it. It was a poem in like an old uh, newspaper. Oh, yeah. I love how you mix. Um, pieces of different age, and we were talking to somebody else about this, because there's a piece that layers vintage buttons and jewelry that have been collected by the artist for, I'll show it to you, I think you'll like it, um, over decades. And uh, that she was talking about how they each bring their own history into the piece, because they all have different histories. And so what happens when you do that is, is that this piece is objects that tell a story and then you tell another story when you put it together. And then for um, whoever this ends up residing with, and living with, um, it will both tell your story because people always want to hear that story, but then they will add their own story on top of that to convey meaning to themselves. So I love that, uh, I love that you collect pieces that have varying like you both are using them as like decorative, and then you're also using the materiality um, to make meaning. To make meaning, yeah. Thank yeah. You. So I'm going to move move you on to the stair. 
Okay, I, 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 so right. I, need, I need you to, yeah, do that because I'm trying to figure out, are you the owl? Oh, no, I'm not the owl. Um, <laughs> no, an old friend um, asked me to make a, uh, an owl for her. She loves owls, not like birds. So, you know, yeah, trying to make like a glowy kind of phoenix vibe. I can see that. Mm -hmm. And even this has a, it doesn't quite have a fire vibe, but it has like an iridescent glowing energy to it. Yeah. Uh, especially like when you start getting into this area. Uh, can you talk about the materials that you use to make this? Because uh, this, uh, wait, this wait, is wait, more wait. typically what we have uh, shown in your work. And this also is you're using found materials and layers, but yeah. it's a little bit different. So can you talk so about So for this, I use a whole bunch of napkins and a uh, table, uh, little table coasters. Oh, yeah. Yeah. So it's not like foam things. A lot of paint. So, so these are napkins? Mm -hmm. all, uh, you see the uh, prints on it? So prints. I'm going to touch. Yeah. I'm sorry, I always... I, I would not... This one is available to in a yeah. way to touch. That one's under glass. Yeah. But yeah. only <laughs> respectfully and, uh, and uh, not too much. <laughs> um, but that's a, the, the thing, the reason I was surprised by that is because you can't see most of the edges. And so I was surprised to hear that oh, it's not yeah. as, uh, as opposed to like tissue paper or something because you have concealed the individual and this looks like a solid piece. So uh, so this is napkins and then this is a table, um, what do they call them? Runner? Yeah. Like a table yeah. runner. So uh, one of my believe you, Carol, I believe you had a question. Oh, well, the first one was to find out if you were the owl, and you told me no. And um, we're all the owl, Mom. Wow. Like a self portrait? Well, yeah, because uh, the, the stare is so direct and piercing that I almost get a sense of the owl being you. The as owl is an avatar yeah. looking out at the world. World, right. And, that, and that's kind of like you. You're, you're this quiet, this somewhat quiet you know, observer who deeply penetrates by look at the world. And I didn't know if in some way I should be seeing you as, a, you know, is the owl is a metaphor for you or are you interested in the owl because you're interested in owls? Uh, more so it's straight owls, but I, <laughs> The stare, like the attitude, is kind of like after the person I made it for. Oh. So she's very like direct and like in your face. <laughs> so it's kind of like. So that. she has a penetrating look of observation that yeah. she uses in her life too. Not that you, you, you're not a, you're not like a. Oh, that's not me. No. You're more of a yeah. open, like you. I love this about you too. You're always watching and then incorporate. Like you have a very good view of what it seems like you have a good view of what the nature you're able to observe human nature in a way that is beautiful and warm and then portray the things that you see which i think is a great gift for artists to have oh, yeah. so i mean you should if you don't want to do that maybe this i'm gonna go the other route too the uh the darker route yeah you can and i mean i think we all sometimes do but yeah, like my, my uh, artwork before was very like dark, and this is a way to kind of like brighten it up, bring it to yeah, it. yeah. Like uh, they say, sunlight is the best disinfectant, and like your work often talks about, even in this piece, your work often talks about subjects that we speaks to. I should say um, topics that we might not always want to directly speak on but if we don't talk about it there is no resolution and then people it allows things to be debate when you're not upfront and honest about like it would be unfair to say that um all people are feel accepted as children of god but in your world people should be accepted as children of god and that's something that i really like like and you have um uh, some of you have probably seen some of terence's other work uh, that speaks on, um, and I am not qualified to speak on this, 
uh, the experience of being Black in America and that history, and yet you do it in a really beautiful way. You use found materials, which um, I think that that's interesting because a lot of art that was done by uh, enslaved people was using the materials that they had available. And so I don't know if that, I'm pretty sure that was intentional, but- I heard it before, yeah, yeah. Yeah, but uh, so I think that, uh, I, I love that about you and to go and um, come back to this. So what we thought was interesting even when we were like during the show was we were like, he's such an observer and this is an observer. Oh, that's why she asked that question is because this is such an observer and you are such an observer, uh, which I think is what all Carol's questions have been like coming towards. So, you well, I, I like the idea that this is a this is based on a person that, you know, and they they yeah. do know how to have that look. Yeah, I, yeah, like I don't have that look. <laughs> so, <laughs> um, I was going to ask a question. So this is a really, um, what's interesting about the palette that you've used in this is, um, I don't want to say, mute. it's still bright, it's still colorful, but it's somewhat muted. Um, and in some ways, the colors, ombre, um, like even into this, it, it, it kind of, you know, there's gradients of it in here. How did you think of this color? Like what, what made you come to this palette? I was kind of thinking about like the fall weather, like the fall, the fur. Oh yeah. She's has an attitude, but more monotone, not like not like, you know. Not like me like bright and everything, but more more a little more muted, yeah. but still like subtle color. Yeah. So I like that you that um in putting that halo around. Yeah, the orange, the halo. Yeah. Set. It, it not only um set the figure of the owl off from its background, but it's almost like an attitude. Yeah, it's an aura. It's not just a halo, it's an aura. Oh, wow. um, and it's bright and it's vibrant. Uh, and I'm, just, I'm assuming that she's bright and vibrant. Not bright and vibrant. Vibrant, which my favorite term. Uh, although I'm garishly bright, <laughs> but that's okay. It's not about me. Um, so one thing that's common between these and I think makes them fit really well for the show is that they're both truly portraits. Um, I like that you, um, I think it's interesting that you allow, so some portraits are just, this is what this person catalogs, what they look like. I'm putting this thing together and it's looking like this person. Whereas these encompass not just what this is a, an owl, and so therefore standing in as an avatar for her. And this actually is a portrait of them. But you've also done a collection of other things that actually speak to them um, in a more encompassing way than just um, a recording of their features, uh, of their physical, their physicality. It also um, interprets. Um, it tells you a story about who they are. Do you try to inform, like, infer that in all of your pieces? Uh, now I do, yeah. So before, like, my artwork was very dark, and, like, you know, uh, telling the story of, like, uh, growing up, you know, Black in America and, like, learning about slavery at a young age. Yeah. So I tried to, like, find the happy ending, but it's not a happy ending, so I'm going towards, <laughs> I'm going towards, like, looking at the beauty of, yeah. you know, People, you know, like she called herself child of God, and the other one, uh, my brother comes up, I am my brother's keeper. Yes, yes. So they're like they're naming themselves and they're like showing their personalities through the painting. Yeah. Well, and also I, I think I said this in my one minute crit of um, fight or flight. What I like is that while sometimes your subject matter is dark and complex and all these things, you seem to use that pain as a, if I didn't include it in this one, it was in like the 50 other versions of it that I did. Um, you use pain and trauma as a springboard uh, to freedom and redemption, which I think, and to me, that's where the birds really tie in is because like historically symbols, birds have been symbols of freedom and resilience. 
Um, and I think that there, you could look at it as it's dark, but the truth is that the subject matter is dark, but you're able to execute it in a way that's really beautiful because you're taking that trauma, you're taking that pain, and you use it as a springboard towards redemption, which in itself, uh, until we're successful, is not a happy ending, but it leaves the hope as the possibility. Your work is hopeful, whether you realize it or not, I think it's hopeful. Good job. So, yeah. <laughs> well, to a certain extent, you also succeed because uh, everyone who has come in to see your work, um, they, they really end up being emotionally attached. They might not buy it, which I'm unhappy about, but um, they do get this, this sense of, of the hope and the beauty that you apparently see the world how you see the world. But I also think to draw back to the beginning of the conversation, which was about how you see and use a visual vocabulary in a way that in some ways you don't um, get to express in words or um, don't feel able to express in words. I also sometimes wonder if that's because for a lot of these subjects, no one wants to talk about it. And so, of course, expressing them visually when somebody is muting you becomes a much more natural, nuanced thing. Um, but they're, they're so beautiful. They demand to be talked about, but more than that, they demand to be experienced, I think. So, um, so come experience them. Yes, you should come and experience them. Terrence's work is beautiful. Uh, you'll never find a piece that you're like, I don't know how to feel about this. <laughs> like, you will always look at them. They're thoughtful. They're beautiful. They're well curated. And we're so happy to have them in our portrait show. Um, so that will be running from January 19th through March 12th. Terrence, thank you so much. Thank you, Terrence.